In this video, I'll be showing you how to work with 3D perspectives in your project. For this, I will primarily be using the Create 3D Boxes tool, and later as I decompose the contents, take a look at the Align and Distribute options. Now, if you can imagine a vanishing point where the horizon would be set at where these two angles intersect. This represents your vanishing point, say, at the edge of a city. And any cube in the foreground will move directly along these angles to represent a smaller box. At this point, it might have thinner lines and a less saturated color of because of how objects are visibly represented as they move farther in the distance. You may have to edit these manually. At least it'll create the perspective part for you when using 3D boxes. Now I've prepared a 3D city. When you're working with the 3D tool, you have to pay attention to maybe different vanishing points that need to be applied to strategic objects. In this case, these these 3D rectangles all fit in within the range of these two vanishing points. However, because this one is outside of the range, it will look odd if I use the same vanishing points. And this is just one thing you have to take into consideration when working with 3D rectangles. You can decompose a rectangle to get an abstract effect, or I will even show you how to create a more predictable outcome and remove one of the faces as well as adjust the focus of some of the edges for, say, a logo. Start by selecting the Create 3D Boxes tool. Now, I've already included a guideline to snap my vanishing points to. If you don't already have this set up, I would suggest you go ahead and start by adding a guideline to do this for whatever your horizon will be. Then by clicking and dragging, you are given a box, a 3D rectangular box or a cube. And you can see here, I have the option to adjust three vanishing points. Right now, I can even set the infinite y-axis to be finite if I wanted to drag that one down. This range is a little bit too narrow. So by dragging these out, it gives me a little bit more room to work with when I want to create a series of rectangles or cubes. I can drag the X to move it within the confines of a 3D space. I could also drag any of the corners and shift drag as well to try to limit it to the confines in a particular direction. It says down here the X and Y axes versus the Z axes you see there. It'll indicate what shift dragging will apply to. I'm going to extend this out and at this point work along the generated angle and move my way down along to the final vanishing point. This one is going to be a little tricky at this zoom level. I may need to adjust this manually. Now at this point, if I were to create another 3D box in this area, it would be fine. Anything beyond this point will start to look a little bit skewed. I could unattach this particular vanishing point and adjust it as needed to be extended out back in this other direction, making sure 
that they align with the content I've created previously. I could continue like this by using the last object selected. It takes the previous vanishing point, and if you need to create minor adjustments, you can drag, drag them as needed, keeping in mind when you monitor this, it'll show you how many are being affected by the bottom section where it says how many are shared and it'll give you the option to shift click it to separate it. To select a side, control click the object you want it to be applied to and it'll indicate by the highlighted area which side it has selected. In this case I am going to make a few adjustments and remove this side entirely by pressing delete. By adjusting these properties, you can create a composition you can create a composition that gives the impression that you have content with inside a 3D box. Maybe add a shadow to the bottom there, but these are all some actions you can use when using 3D perspective tools in Inkscape. You can only use boxes and you can manipulate a lot of the properties it's important to watch out for lighting. Now, in this case, the lighting is hitting this side, but say, for example, you wanted to imitate light coming from this direction, you could, in fact, manipulate all the sides as needed to create the appearance of a... to create the appearance of lighter highlights on objects. So I have surrounded my content within a 3D area and at this point I could apply techniques to focus and blur certain areas to create a more interesting dynamic. selecting all of the objects and using the blur selection tool and blurring this somewhat slightly to modify the focus. You could, if you wanted to, jitter the color of objects, not the opacity, to create a similar effect to what I had before using a series of boxes inside a inside a open cube. It depends on what you want to in fact do. And you can always bring focus back in for objects, of course. <laughs> 